أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة الطوبة أو سورة البرات أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم برات من الله ورسوله إلى الذين آحدت من المشركين فسيه في الأرض أربعة عشر وعلموا أنكم غير معجز الله وأن الله مخز الكافرين وعذان من الله ورسوله إلى الناس يوم الحج الأكبر أن الله بريء من المشركين ورسوله فإن تبتم فهو خير لكم وَإِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ فَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ غَيْرُ مُعْجِزِ اللَّهِ وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَاحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِّن لِّسَانِي يَفْقَهُوا قَوْلِي اللَّهُمَّ رَبَّنَا أَلْهِمْنَا رُشْدَنَا وَأَعِذْنَا مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا اللَّهُمَّ أَرِنَا الْحَقَّ حَقًّا وَارْزُقْنَا اتِّبَاعَهُ وَأَرِنَا الْبَاطِلَ بَاطِلًا وَارْزُقْنَا اجْتِنَابَهُ اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى آمين يا رب العالمين في دنيا مفلاح سبحانه وتعالى وجل وعلا and invoking and asking his help we are starting our study of سورة البرات or سورة الطوبة it has two names this surah is of a very peculiar nature in the whole of the Quran and a few things must be understood before going to the translation and some explanations about the ayat of the surah al-mubaraka you know the advent of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was twofold or two pronged as you may call it the one aspect of his advent to that we can call al-bi'satul khassa that is he was sent for the people living in the arabian peninsula who claimed to be following ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam who were either from the progeny of Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam or they were subordinates to them. He himself belonged to that community. Huwa allazhi ba'asa fil ummiyyina rasoolam minhu. So that was his special assignment. The second assignment, second advent of his Second aspect of his advent, that is for the whole of humanity, for all times to come, till the doomsday. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَزِيرًا Now these two things are very distinct. And you know, if you don't understand the difference between the two, a few issues which are discussed in this surah cannot be understood. All the responsibilities regarding the first Bersa, al bersatul Khassa, he accomplished himself. 
in about 20 years time he brought about a total revolution changed everything in the Arabian Peninsula eliminated shirk annihilated kufr and the deed of Islam became dominant over the whole of the Arabian Peninsula but for the second aspect of his advent al al amma please note he only initiated the process in the later years of his life. Then it was handed over to the Ummah to accomplish it and complete it. Now the first important result is because he had a special assignment, special advent to the pagan Arabs, to the idolaters who claimed to be following Ibrahim and who were the progeny of Ismail. And because he was from among them, just as, as we have been reading, Ela Adin Akhahum Huda, Ela Samuda Akhahum Saliha, Ela Madiana Akhahum Shuaiba. In the same way, he was from among them, who were Lazi Baasafil Ummiyina Rasulam Minhum, speaking their language. And the revelation came to him in their language. Therefore, at the end and at the accomplishment of his first assignment, no concession was given to these people. There was only two alternatives. Either embrace Islam or you will be eliminated. No concession. Because what happened to the people of Nuh? Did they reject it? Weren't they annihilated? What happened to people of Hud? The nation of Ad in this very peninsula, in the southern part. They rejected Hud and were annihilated. So, on that basis, there was no third option given. This was the final installment of the punishment from Allah to these people. And the worst humiliation to which they were put. You know, I told you the first installment of punishment, Karmatul Badr. Seventy of their chiefs lying dead. And the final installment, the worst humiliation, challenge, open ultimatum. You are given four months or the like. After that, فَإِذَنْ صَلَقَ الْأَشْهُرُ الْحُرُمْ فَقْتُلُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَيْسُ وَجَدْتُمُوهُ Till these mushrikeen, wherever you find. This was the punishment in a different form. And the punishments to the former nations were not in one form always. Different forms of punishments. Firaun and his chiefs and his army taken out and drowned in the sea. Seventy chieftains from Quraysh taken out, killed that brother. And then the total humiliation to which they were put. This we may call the mopping up operation in the military te terminology in the Arabian Peninsula. As for the second aspect of his advent, a third alternative was also given to the Jews, to the Christians, and for that matter to all of humanity. Either embrace Islam or accept to pay jizya, accept the supremacy of the Islamic social order, state. Or you come to the field and let us decide the matter. 
this way or the other. This alternative was given, not to the Ummiyin. Why? Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being one of them in their own language, have conveyed to them fully the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other people can have some difficulties in understanding him. A barrier of language. Maybe they feel he is an alien person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives due consideration to all these things. That is the basic difference. Now, please keep in mind the historical background. For about 18 years, Muhammad was fully engrossed in accomplishing and fulfilling the requirements of the al bayrsatul Khas. Didn't send any Muballiq outside Arabia. He could do it. Then when he started coming to him, he was quite a well-to-do person. He had a lot of money with him. The wealth of Khadija, Rabi Allah Ta'ala Anha, was at his disposal. He could hire some persons and send the letter to Heraclius or to the Emperor of Persia. No. For 18 long years. 12 at Makkah, another 6 at Medina. He was engrossed fully in fulfilling the responsibilities of the al Satul Khas, a special assignment to the people of Arabian Peninsula. Now, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, just imagine why Quran put so much emphasis on this. We think that the victory of Bakka was more splendid, more important. In the books on Sira, you will find, you know, a very big chapter on it. But in Quran, we find something absolutely contrary to that. He doesn't even mention the victory of Bakka. He calls the treaty of Hudaybiyah, Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. That was actually representing that his mission is accomplished in the Arabian Peninsula. When the Quraysh were compelled to recognize him that he is a power to reckon with, when they made a treaty with him, he accept, they accepted. And they were the chiefs. Although there was no formal government in the Arabian Peninsula, but politically, economically, religiously, they were the chiefs. So Sula Hudabi actually marks the fulfillment. But after this, now you know this is a two-pronged process. The rest of the four years you may call them. In the Arabian Peninsula, still some work was to be done. In the seventh year, after Hijra, the most strong fortified position of the Jews in the Arabian Peninsula smashed. Khaybar conquered. In the eighth year after Hijra, Makkah conquered. And in the ninth year, started the mopping up operation. Cleans this peninsula from all forms of shirk and kufr. If there are any, any centers, remnants of any resistance, they must be washed off. And on the other hand, now he wrote the letters. 
before the sixth year, seventh year, after Hijra, no letter, no emissary, no muballir outside peninsula. But after the treaty for the FBI, the seventh year, now he is sending the emissaries. A letter to Heraclius, the castle, the emperor of Rome. Letter to the emperor of Persia. Letter to Mokokos of Alexandria in Egypt. Letter to Nagus in Abyssinia, and so on and so forth. That was the initiation of his process beyond the peninsula. Initiation of the responsibilities of his al Satul Amma outside the peninsula. He initiated the process. <coughs> what happened? That I shall inshallah discuss later on. But you can have two things. Due to these letters, first battle of Mota, and the second then the journey to Tabuk. And that was the last. Now if you keep these two things in mind, now please note that the first 37 ayat of this surah, they discuss the culmination and the accomplishment at the final stages of the fulfillment of the special assignment of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to the Arabian Peninsula. That is why victory of Bakka, not under that title, that is also discussed. And then the final ultimatum. Baratum min Allahi wa Rasulihi ila al-lazeed ahadtum min al-mushrikeen. Now you have no alternative, no third alternative. Either embrace Islam within a specified period or you will be put to sword. Open, no hesitation, no mincing of words. And you should not also be apologetic for that matter. These are the words of Quran. Faqtulul mushrikeena haysu wajattumum. But the rest of the surah from the 38th ayat, ayat to the end, that concerns, you know, the second aspect of his advent, and that is al-Bisatul Ammah. So that is why the time of revelation of these two parts is very important to keep in mind. And you know there is a complication also, and I will tell you why. Ayat from 1st to 6th, and then again from 25 to 37, they were revealed in Zikada of 9th year of Hijri calendar. Ayat from 7 to 24, they were revealed much earlier, in the 8th year of the Hijri calendar, before the victory of Makkah. But the rest of the surah, Ayat 38 till the end, it was all revealed through the months of Rajab to Shawwal of the ninth year of Hijri calendar. Some of it before commencing the journey towards the book. Some ayat revealed during the journey towards the book. Some ayat revealed during the stay at the book. Some ayat revealed during the journey back home. And some ayat after the Prophet and the believers reached back Medina. There is about three months, two, three months, starting from Rajab, ending with Shabwal. So this was the expedition. And during that expedition, these ayat from 38 to 129 were revealed. Now the complication is, 
Then the ayats from 7 to 24, they were revealed one year before the first six ayat. But these first six ayat, which should be with the ayat 25 to 37, they have been taken out. Why? This is a special style of the Quran which I referred to last night also. We found, you know, in Surah Al-Anfal, the most important issue was taken, first of all. Yasaloon at Ali Al-Anfal. And then the discussion. In the same way, these six ayats were very crucial, very important. If you keep in mind the political background of the peninsula, they were pronounced at the Hajj of ninth year of Hijri calendar. And they were revealed when? When the Hajj caravan had already left under the Imara and leadership of Hazrat Abu Bakr ta'ala. The Prophet didn't go himself. And till that year, the Mushrikeen and Kuffar were also allowed to perform Hajj. This is also a very important point to note. You know, the practical wisdom of the Prophet Makkah was conquered in the eighth year in Ramadan. He could have made pilgrimage. Did he do? No. Number two, he left the affairs of Hajj in the hands of the Mushrikeen. They managed the affairs as they used to manage. In the ninth year again he didn't go. In the ninth year also, Muslims also performed Hajj and the Mushrikeen and Kuffar also performed Hajj according to their tradition. So it was again a mixed hajj, although Makkah had been conquered more than a year before. But you know the gradual takeover. So he didn't go himself. 300 people from Medina had left for Makkah under the leadership of Hazrat Abu Bakr when these six ayats were revealed. Then the Prophet ﷺ sent Hazrat Ali رضي الله تعالى go and you will have to proclaim on my behalf. And these ayat were read out at Mina also, at Arafat also by Hazrat Ali. And it's a very interesting incident which took place. When Hazrat Ali reached, you know, because the caravan of 300 that was moving slow, Hazrat Ali was swift. So he could never overtake them. So that caravan was somewhere, you know, camping. When the news came, Ali has come. He was not to come. How has he come? Abu Bakr didn't know what had happened behind him. Now when Ali went to see Abu Bakr, meet him, the first question that was asked by Hazrat Abu Bakr, Amirun or Mamurun? Have you been sent as Amir or Mamur? I must know before talking to you. If you are the Amir, you come this side. I go to that side. If you are Mamur, I must know that you are Mamur. And the answer was Mamur. Look to the sense of organization that the Prophet ﷺ had cultivated. They don't talk to each other before, knowing the position. Amirun or Mamur. And he said, Mamur. But only this special assignment, because it was the custom of the Arabian, you know, people, that such a, an important announcement could be made only by a very close relative of the Prophet from his own family, his own cousin. So he made the announcement, but whenever this announcement was made, Abu Bakr was there, sitting between, or standing, on one side Ali, on the other Abu Huraira, and Ali proclaiming. 
So these are the six ayat. Now please start this regular study. Baratum min Allahi wa Rasulihi ila al-lazina ahattu min al-mushrikeen. This is an open declaration of acquittal from Allah and His Messenger to those of the associators with whom you, O believers, had covenanted or made any treaties. All treaties stand abrogated. But there are three types and they are going to be discussed one by one. فَسِيهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَرْبَعَةَ أَشْهُرٍ you can move about in the land, in this peninsula, for four months. And be it known to you, you can't defeat Allah. Don't try to resist. And be it known to you that Allah is going to humiliate those who rejected the faith, who rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَعَذَانُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لَلنَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْحَجِّ الْأَكْبَرِ And it's a proclamation from Allah and His Messenger on the day of the greater pilgrimage. Now there is a very wrong notion about Hajjul Akbar. People think that if, you know, Arafah is on Friday, it is Hajjul Akbar. <coughs> Nonsense. Hajjul Akbar is Hajj. Hajjul Asghar is Umrah. So actually it has no special significance if Arafah falls on Friday or Thursday or any other day. No special. وَعَذَانُوا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لَلنَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْحَجِّ الْأَكْبَرِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيءٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولُهُ Very clear terms. Allah is acquitted, has nothing to do with any of the treaties with the mushrikeen who are associating other gods to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِن تُبْتُمْ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ So if you repent, return, accept the deen, this is better for you. And if you turn away, فَعَلَمُوا وَنَّكُمْ غَيْرُ مُوَجِزِ اللَّهِ Then let it be known to you clearly. You cannot frustrate Allah. You cannot defeat Allah. You cannot outwit Allah. You cannot outcome Allah. Overcome Allah. وَإِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ فَعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ غَيْرُ مُوَجِذِ اللَّهِ وَبَشْرِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ And O our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam give these unbelievers the glad tidings of a very painful torment. Now this four months period was given to those with whom there was treaty but no specified time. A general treaty. So it's very logical that the abrogation of the treaty should not be instantaneous. Some time must be given. Four months. Now is the case of those people with whom, those tribes with whom there was a treaty with a specified period for two years. For example, one year, whatever, whatever it can be. So this is now their case. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ أَحَدْتُ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَنْقُصُوكُمْ شَيْئًا Except those of the mushrikeen with whom you had a treaty, covenant, that is, for a fixed time. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَنْقُصُوكُمْ شَيْئًا And then they had not did anything wrong in their treaties. They have fulfilled all the obligations, honestly, sincerely. They are abiding by all the conditions, terms and conditions of the treaty. 
وَلَمْ يُظَاهِرُوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَحَدًا And they have not supported anyone against you. فَأَتِمُّوا إِلَيْهِمْ أَحْدَهُمْ This tells you, no. This treaty is with some specified period of time. So you have to fulfill. That time must be fulfilled. أَتِمُّوا إِلَيْهِمْ أَحْدَهُمْ Complete their period for them. إِلَى مُدَّتِهِمْ to the period which was already decided. إِذَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who regard him, who are conscious of him, who fear him. فَإِذَنْ سَلَخَ الْأَشْرُ الْحُرُمْ Now the third. People with whom there was no treaty. The third category. For them, no four months required. فَإِذَنْ سَلَقَ الْأَشْهُرُ الْحُرُمْ As soon as the sacred months come to an end. And the sacred months, you know, there were three for Hajj, Hajj al-Akbar, and one for Hajj al-Asghar. Rajab for Hajj al-Asghar. And Zikada, Zilhijjah, and Muharram for Hajj al-Akbar. What does it mean? It's been proclaimed. This proclamation is being made on the 9th and 10th of Zilhajjah. So now only 40 days. When Muharram comes to an end, Ashurul Haram finish, start. Faizan salakal Ashurul Hurum, Pakhtulul Mushrikina Haisu Vajatu, Wahuzuhum, Wahsuruhum, Wahudulahum Kulla Marsan. Look to the harshness of the words. And never feel apologetic about it. If the whole people of Nuh could be eliminated in one flood, if the whole nation of Ad could be put to an end, Kallam yagna fiha, Fotiya dabrul qawmil lazina zolamu. If the whole cities of Sodom and Gomorrah could be destroyed, That this has been the rule with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To whichever nation a messenger was sent, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَوْعَسَ رَسُولًا Rasul sent, he conveyed the message. He made everything clear. No place of any doubt. Even if now they don't accept, they deserve no mercy of Allah. They are just like the garbage to be burnt. This earth should be cleared of them. But the same was the case for these people. Muhammad was from among themselves. Min kum. Huwa alladhi ba'asa fil lumiyina rasoolam min hum. So no leniency. Faizan salakha al-ashwar al-hurum. No sooner than these sacred months come to an end, فَقْتُلُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَيْسُ وَجَدْتُبُوهُمْ Start killing these mushrikeen, wherever you find them. خُذُوهُمْ Seize them, arrest them. وَحْسُرُوهُمْ Besiege them. وَقْعُدُوا لَهُمْ كُلَّ مَرْصَدْ And sit in wait for them in every place of ambush. فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا السَّلَاةَ Now if they repent, if they turn to Allah, and what are the two signs? Salah and Zakah. وَأَقَامُوا السَّلَاةَ وَأَقَامُوا السَّلَاةَ If they establish prayer and agree to pay Zakah, فَخَلُّوا سَبِيلَهُمْ Now you let them go. إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Verily Allah is غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Forgiving and merciful. Now this point is also very important. Because Hazrat Abu Bakr are good on the basis of this ayah. There is another ayah also which will be coming very soon. When in his days of caliphate, 
some tribes said, we, we shall not pay you the zakah. We decided to fight against them. There was some advice, some sincere people. Even Hazrat Umar, Razi Allah Ta'ala, although he is Ashabduhum fi Amrillah, Umar. But he only, you know, he advised. The conditions are not favorable. Number one, the Prophet has just died. The hearts of Muslims are bleeding. Their morale is down. Then you have decided to send the army under Usama ibn Zaid. Okay. You say because the Prophet had decided it, I am not going to stop it. It has to go. Then these people who are claiming to be Prophets, they are clear. Apostates, Gurtad, we have to fight against them. Now don't open another front, because these people at least, they have not believed in any new prophet. And let it be known, they didn't say, we will not pay zakah. They said, we will not pay zakah to you. We shall manage ourselves. Tukhadu min agniyahim wa turaddu ila fuqaraihim, we can do it ourselves. Each tribe can do it. Collect your own zakah themselves and then distribute among the poor of the same tribe. We are not going to pay it to you. So be lenient, that was the advice. But Hazrat Abu Bakr argued from this that the minimum conditions at which the Mushrikeen could be let go are three. Yashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I cannot accept anything less than that. No revisionism. Very beautiful words he uttered. Ayyubadda nuddeen wa ana hai. Will the deen be changed? And I am still living? If nobody is going, ready to go to fight them, I will go alone. Anyhow, this ayah is important that matter. وَإِنْ أَحَدُ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَعَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ And if some of these mushrikeen, these are believers, these associators, they want your protection, to give them the protection, until they come to you and listen to the ayat of Allah. حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ Now, unless an ultimatum was given to the whole the tribes of the Arabian Peninsula, it was a very big event. Maybe some of the tribes had not, up till that time, even considered what is this dava of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? What is calling? But now there was an ultimatum. So naturally there could be a possibility. They wanted to know what is your deen. So if they want to come to you, you grant them protection. And then you transport him to his place of peace. Not now decide whether you accept or not, here and now. Accept here or you will be just finished here. No. They had come to know, to listen to the words of Allah, to the revelations. Now, when you have done that job, duty, let them go and transport them to their places of peace. And then you, when the ultimatum time is finished, then you can do whatever you like. So these are the six most profound ayat of the Quran. And because, you know, the harshness in them, because of that, Ayat of Bismillah is neither read nor written in the beginning of this surah. Because Bismillah contains two names of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. And this surah, according to the words of Hazrat Ali, it came down with a sword in its hand. That's why it has another name also, Al-Fazi'ah, Al-Mufzi'ah. The humiliator, this ultimatum was a big ultimatum. 
There is no concession for you. But what happened actually, not a single person was murdered on this account. All accepted. Or some of them left the Arabian Peninsula. Abu Jahl was also one of them. He was also going, making hijrah in the way of his own deen. Not Abu Jahl, son of Abu Jahl, Ikrama. But you know later on, it, was a, it is a long incident, he came back. And there is a community, let me mention here, in Afghanistan. They claim to be descendants of those people who ran away from the Arabian Peninsula after this ultimatum. They are living in Nuristan. This community is divided into two parts. One part is in Pakistan and they are still Kafirs and that region is called Kafiristan. And it's being preserved as such. The other people, they had migrated to Afghanistan. And there, you know, Amir Dost Muhammad, he gave them an ultimatum. Either you accept Islam or you'll be killed. So they accepted Islam. So the same community divided into two parts. In, Afghan in Pakistan, they are Kafiristan, near Chitral. And in Afghanistan, the adjoining area, now they have an Islamic state, small, tiny Islamic state. A few hundred thousand people, not more. But they claim we are Tarshi. We are the progeny of those who fled. And just as you know, the flood, the flood of the victories of Islamic armies were proceeding, we were also, you know, going farther and farther away till we reached here, our, our fathers, you know, and we settled here in the mountains. So that was a safe place for us. This is what they say. I, I can't say whether the claim is correct or not. Now this, from Ayah 7 to Ayah 24, and most of the modern Mufassirin have committed blunders regarding these Ayat, couldn't understand. And this is because they couldn't know that these Ayat were revealed more than a year before these Ayat. Ayat number 1, and 1 to 6 and then 25 to 37. They were revealed 1 to 6 and, and 25 to 37 revealed in the Zikada of ninth year of Hijri calendar. But these Ayat which we will, will be reading now, they were revealed a year and a quarter before, before the victory of Makkah. And what was the background? When the Prophet ﷺ was planning the final assault on Makkah, there was a difference of opinion among Muslims. There were Munafiqeen also. It was a disease with them. And now you know you are going to fight Quraysh. What has happened to you? You have gone crazy. Varraha Ulai Deenuhum. Read that ayah last night. Their deen has made them crazy. Number two, some of the sincere Muslims also, they have some considerations. After all, they are custodians of Makkah. They are custodians of Kaaba. They serve the pilgrims. They arrange water for them. They are managing the house of Allah. So, we shouldn't go and, you know, attack them. And second consideration, families of some of the Muslims are still there. What will happen to them? Then you will have fighting, you know. Maybe it goes up to a street, street fighting, house to house fighting. What will happen? So there was a strong opinion that we shouldn't do it. Just as you know, some people didn't want to go to Badr, they wanted to go to the caravan, not to confront the army. In the same way, there were people who thought it's no good. Why not go on preaching and preaching and preaching and everything would be okay? Why to take this harsh step, especially against the custodians of Kaaba? 
So this is the background in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is criticizing them. What has happened to you? What are these thoughts? كَيْفَ يَكُونَ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ أَحْدٌ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَإِنْدَ رَسُولِهِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ أَحْدٌ إِنْدَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ How can there be a treaty with Allah and His Messenger for the Mushrikeen? There cannot be a, a permanent treaty. The truth and the falsehood cannot coexist. This coexistence is nonsense. باطل دوئی پسند ہے حق لا شریک ہے شرکت میں آنا ہے حق و باطل نہ کر قبول تو there cannot be any permanent covenant between مشرقین و موحدین اللہ نظیر آہد تم اندل مسجد الحرام except those who with whom you made and concluded a treaty near the sacred mosque that is the treaty of Hudaybiyah actually you made a treaty فَمَسْتَقَامُوا لَكُمْ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا لَكُمْ So long as they stand true to you, you also stand true to them. But if they break the treaty, the blame is on them, not on you. They have broken the treaty. The treaty of Hudayb, they were broken. From their side, not from Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. كَيْفَ وَإِنْ يَزْهَرُوا عَلَيْكُمْ How? Just imagine what you are thinking of Muslims. And if they prevail upon you, لَا يَرْقُبُوا فِيكُمْ إِلَّمْ وَلَا ذِمَّهِ They will not respect or regard about you, neither of any relationship, nor of any treaty. يُرْدُونَكُمْ بِأَفْوَارِهِمْ They want to please you only through their mouths, through their words. وَتَّابَ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts refuse. رَقْفَرُهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ And most of them are transgressors. اشتراؤ بے آیات اللہ ہیں سمنن خلیلہ دے پرچیزڈ اور ایکسپٹڈ بارٹرڈ بی آیات اف اللہ دی ریویلیشنز اف اللہ فار ای ویری سمال پرائیس قرآن وز ریویل ٹو تھرڈ اف ایٹ ان بکہ دیز ایسی پیپل کو دیلنٹ ایکسپٹ دے سور بی آیات اف اللہ فر سم ویری ٹریویل گینز دیر پوزیشن دیر پولیٹیکل ایسنڈنسی That's all, what you do? فَصَدُّ عَنْ سَبِي لَهِمْ So they held back from the path of Allah and they stopped others also from the path of Allah. I told you, سَدَّ يَسُدُّ has both the meanings. To yourself hold back or to stop and bar others. إِنَّهُ سَعَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Verily, whatever they are doing is very evil. So don't hesitate. Go ahead. لَا يَرْقُبُونَ فِي مُؤْمِنٍ إِلَّمْ وَلَا ذِمَّا وَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُعْتَدُونَ Again, repeat repetition. They never respect, never regard concerning any mu'min, neither the bond of relationship nor the bond of any treaty or covenant. They are the transgressors. فَإِن تَابُوا Again, the same ayah. فَإِن تَابُوا أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَعَاتَمُوا الزَّكَاةَ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ But if they repent, if they turn towards Allah, if they mend their ways, and they establish Salah, pay Zakah, then they are your brothers in Deen. Even now, the gate is open for them. It has not been closed. It will be closed a year later. The ayat which we have already read, the door will be closed. But even then they could do, they could accept Islam. فَإِن تَعَبُوا وَقَامُوا صَلَاةَ وَعَاتَبُوا الزَّكَاةَ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَنُفَصِّلُوا الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ And we explain our revelations for those who have the knowledge. وَإِن نَكَسُوا أَمَانَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ أَحْدِهِمْ And if they have broken their oaths, after their, tell me, after their conclusion, مِنْ بَعْدِ أَحْدِهِمْ وَتَعَنُوا فِي الدِّينِ فِي دِينِكُمْ And they attack your deen. فَقَاتِلُوا عِمَّتَ الْكُفْرِ Now this word is very important. عِمَّتَ الْكُفْرِ As I told you, there was no formal government, no headquarter of any government. 
But the Aimah of the Arabian Peninsula lived in Mecca. So your mission, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you must also understand, those who believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his mission will not be accomplished until Mecca is cleared of shirk and kufr. And the deen of Allah is made supreme over there. فَقَاتِلُوا عِمَّتَ الْكُفْرِ They are the عِمَّتُ الْكُفْرِ They are the custodians of Kaaba. But actually they are the عِمَّتُ الْكُفْرِ إِنَّهُمْ لَا اَمَانَ لَهُمْ They have no oaths. oaths. Their oaths cannot be trusted. إِنَّهُمْ لَا اَمَانَ لَهُمْ لَا لَهُمْ يَنْتَهُونَ But you know if you go advance and pose a threat, maybe they desist. And see the exhortation. Oh, Muslims. You don't want to fight those who broke their pledge, broke their treaty. And they are the people who decided to expel Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah. And they started. They were the first. And they were the first actually in two ways. Persecution, they started at Bakka. Definitely. They started the persecution. And Muslims, they took the persecution for 12, 12 long years without any retaliation. Number two, a planned attack at, you know, of an army, organized army, which was coming over to attack Medina. That was for the first time from their side at Badr. Whom Bada Ukoma Bala Barra? Atakshauna whom? Now this is, you know, the piercing eyes asking a penetrating question. What has happened to you, O Muslims? You are hesitating from attacking Makkah. Atakshauna whom? Do you fear them? Fallahu ahakwan takshahu in kuntu mu'mineen. Allah is, has greater right that you must fear him if you are real mu'min, if you really believe in him. <laughs> Don't fear them, fear me. <laughs> Fight against them. Allah will chastise them, punish them. Be'adikum, <laughs> at your hands. Wa'yukhlihim, <laughs> and he will humiliate him. وَيَنْصُرْكُمْ And he will help you, alayhim, against them. وَيَشْفِ صُدُورَ قَوْمِ مُؤْمِنِينَ And he will relieve the hearts of the believing people. What was the relief? وَيُزْهِبَ غَيْضَ قُلُوبِهِمْ And he will take from their hearts the rage. There were Muslims, weak Muslims, who couldn't migrate. They were still being persecuted over there. With wounded hearts. So they had all the emotions against the kuffar. Well, Mustafafina min al-Rijal wal Nisa'i wal Bildan wal Lazina yakuluna Rabbana akhridna min hadhi al-Qariyat al-Zalim ahluha. Wajjal lana min ladunka waliya, wajjal lana min ladunka nasira. They were people over there. So you know their hearts are bleeding. They have all the feelings against these people. You don't want to go against them, fight against them. Allah wants that He wants to give the relief to these people and you know the rage of their hearts. And Allah will accept the, rep the repentance of whomsoever He likes. And Allah is all knowing, all wise. أَمْ حَسِبْتُ مَنْ تُطْرَقُوا وَلَمَّا يَعْلَمِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا مِنْكُمْ وَلَمْ يَتَّخِذُوا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلَا رَسُولِهِ وَلَا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلِيجَةً Did you think that you will be left alone? And up till now Allah has not seen who amongst you are ready to make jihad for the cause of Allah. And who are those who didn't take anybody except Allah and His Messenger and Mu'mineen? A friend, a trusted friend. We read the ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah. 
ان نما ولی کم اللہ و رسول ہو و لذین آمن اگین و من یتم اللہ و رسول ہو و لذین آمن فائن حزب اللہ ہم الفائز ہو سو ناؤ دس از اے ٹیسٹ آل دو دیار یور ریلیٹیوز دیار سٹنگ اوور دیار وی ڈونٹ وان دیٹ اینی ہارم شوڈ کم ٹو دیم بٹ دس از دی ٹیسٹ If they have not accepted Islam, if they rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you shouldn't have any soft corner in your hearts about them. Wallahu khabirun bima ta'amaloon, and Allah very well knows what you are doing. Ma kaana lil mushrikeen an yamuru wa sajid Allah, shahidin ala anfusihim bil kufr. These mushrikeen have no right to inhabit the places of the worship of Allah. When they are testifying against their own selves that they are kafirs, they say, we don't believe, we reject the faith. Even then, they should inhabit Makkah. They should be the custodians of Kaaba. How are you ready to reconcile to it? مَا كَانَ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ يَعْمُرُوا مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ شَاهِدِينَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِينَ بِالْكُفْرِ وَلَائِكَ حَبِتَ تَعْمَالُونَ These are the people that all good deeds of theirs have gone in vain, just disappeared. They have been looking after Kaaba, no doubt. They have been serving the pilgrims who come over there. No doubt, all these things were good. They go to their credit, but all their credit has been multiplied by zero and became zero because they rejected the faith. And they are going to Dwell in the fire forever. In the Maya Muruma Sajid Allah, Man Amana Billah Wal Yomilah. Only those people who believe in Allah and the last day, Bakama Salata Wata Zakah, and establish prayer and paid Zakah, they are entitled to it that they should inhabit the places of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walam Yaksha in the law, another quality of theirs is. That he doesn't fear anybody except Allah. Fasa ulai ka yakunu min al muhtadin. So it's hoped that such people will become from among the rightly guided. Ajal tum sikayat al haj jab aymarat al masjid al haram ka manam na billahi wal yom ilahe. Have you considered giving of drink to the pilgrims or looking after or managing the affairs of the? Sacred mosque, equal to the person who has belief in Allah and the last day, and who has been making jihad for the cause of Allah. لا يستوون عند الله. These things are not equal. They are not equal in the eyes of Allah. They might be the custodians, but they have lost all their credit. والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين. Allah is not going to forcibly Guide these people who are the evil doers. Allah Zina Amanu wa Hajar wa Jadu fi sabi Allahi bi amwalim wa anfusim. Allah Mudarrahtan in the Allah. Those who came to believe, then they made hijra, immigrated, and they made jihad, strived to their utmost for the in the way of Allah with their belongings and their lives. They are, they are very much higher up in ranks in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأُولَائِكَهُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ And actually, it are they who are going to be successful, triumphers. يُبَشِّرُهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِّنْهُ Their Lord gives them the glad tidings. بِرَحْمَةٍ مِّنْهُ That they will have mercy from him, but is one in, and he will be pleased with them. But Jannatil lahum fiha naimu mukhim, and the garden in which they will have all the lasting bliss. Khalidina fiha abada, they will remain in that forever, forever. In the Allah, in the Wajr al-Azim, verily, only with Allah is the great reward. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا آباءكم وإخوانكم أولياء يستحب الكفر على الإيمان. Oh, you who believe, don't take even your fathers or your brothers as friends or protectors. 
in his tahabbul kufr ala iman if they have preferred kufr to iman they might be your fathers they might be your sons they might be your brothers but now the cut with the sword of islam has cut these relations if they loved and preferred to remain in kufr you have no connection with them all your relations gone they stand by ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la tattakhidhu aba'akum wa ikhwanakum awliya in istahabbu al-kufra 'ala al-iman wa may yatawallahum minkum fa ulaika humul zalimun and whosoever from amongst you takes friends makes friendship with them thinks that them to be your protector or tries to protect him so like ahum zalim that they are also among the evil doers barakallahu li wa lakum fil qur'an alazim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayat wa zikri hakim allahu akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations. first on themselves their families inform their friends and then to invite the non-muslims to islam the ultimate goal is to seek allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter for more information about iona please visit us at www.tanzim.us you may also email us at info@tanzem.us at or call our toll free number 866-779-IONA join us together we can make a difference